Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi to everybody. I just wanted to reach out to you and talk about something that keeps coming up as of late. Everybody wanting to go to 10 gigabit networks. Um, so I thought I'd rehash this again because everyone seems to be making the same basic mistakes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend, hey guys, go out, look for some hardware and things like that. So we'll do that first, and then I'll explain why you build it all out, you connect it all up, and all of a sudden you're just seeing, oh, one gigabit bandwidth. So let me help you out here a little bit. So in this environment, what we have basically is, if you look here very closely, you'll see the Minotic series switch. It's a 10 gigabit switch, and it has both fiber and copper 10 gig based GBIX interfaces and it is a very cost-effective switch does really well and it transitions from fiber to copper pretty cleanly and by doing that I mean as in if I pull this GBIC out here's my 10 gigabit pipe and it's not fiber it's actually copper and I put it back in and I have of course a running 10 gigabit network now the other thing I have in the background just to prove to you that I am accurate on this I have another 10 gig port which is not active because I have my servers offline that is paired with the 10 gigabit switch which is right here so with that being said the next thing I need to worry about are my NICs so 10 gigabit NIC cards well you have three different classes okay you have what's called a true native fiber 10 gig card which has just basically a mounted permanently mounted GBIC this is a GBIC right here and you're not able to exchange it, but it's basically a, a low cost 10 gigabit pipe. It does pretty well. Then you have what's called the, the, the uh, interface slot version, which can allow you to do a 10 gig high speed GBIC, or you can do, as you see here, a fiber optic GBIC, which is also 10 gigabit. Now we'll talk about cables in a minute, but the key thing here is this card is very important because it has onboard software. Remember that, onboard software. Now with that, we also have traditional RJ45 10 gigabit NICs as well. And as you notice real, real quickly, it has a pretty serious heatsink on. This is an Asus car 10 gigabit, and this is an Intel multifunction 10 gigabit card as well. Now, I'm not going to go too heavy on the cable side, but you want to have in your 10 gigabit network the rated 10 gig based fiber. In this case, I have Renline here, which is the yellow multi mode mode cabling. And then, of course, we have an actual hard, cop hard copper, high insulated, high data transfer rate 10 gigabit GBIC here, which goes right into here, just like a fiber GBIC does, but it is not using fiber optics at all. In this particular case, it's using a combination of copper and heavy insulation to provide its ability to have connectivity. Now, something else that's important here to re recognize, since we're talking about cabling, notice that I have here what appears to be a paired connection to what looks like a very large 48 port switch down here, as you can see, and this is a classic one this is actually a Nortel series switch, you can see there, full 7 layer, very capable switch, uh, and it has a paired gigabit connection that runs up to the uplink, which is a 1 gig connection out of the house. And the thing is, this it does pretty good on the switching, but I have found that with this particular style switching, it actually... Um, is a little bit more of a sleepiness to it in my opinion and so because of that as I'm trying to get this out hang on a second uh, I realized that at that point stage the GBIC itself was actually an older class GBIC I can't get it out right now but anyways uh, slightly larger than uh, what we call the standard industry guideline GBICs that are out there but it wasn't working so well so what I did because I have a 10 gig switch. I did give up a 10 gig switch, set it to a one gig mode. And here, as you can see, it is the uplink for the lap. And so the Cat5 traffic goes through here 
that's one gigabit and down. The 10 gig go here, but they immediately get outbound connectivity. It's important to understand that if you're gonna do this, design it in a pyramid format where your fastest is at the top and your slowest is at the bottom. One thing you do not wanna do is you don't wanna take a, a spare uh, 10 gigabit switch like you see this one that's paired off from the master switch and try to run your bandwidth through that to the port. Now that would cause a downward pyramid effect. You don't want that. You really want to know that if this is your fastest switch in your network, go ahead and you know expense the cost of that one port. I have four more ports on that other switch. I have high bandwidth speed right here, leaving, the, leaving this lab and getting what I need to do. Now we come to the hard part. Okay, so now, as you can hear the loud noise, I'm spinning up my NetApp storage array first. I need all my drives to come online. And then I'm gonna power up this 10 gigabit server here, which is a Dell uh, 710XD chassis. And it basically is a rock horse, because if I take the cover off, you'll see what I mean. Just look at all those drives. So this is a capacitance, both high performance and low tier per performance. I use it for storage tiering to step you know, high performance over to mid performance down to, to um, lower performance SATA. And this allows me to accomplish quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that guy online. And you'll hear some noises. So just give me a second here while this is posting. And I will uh, basically check to make sure that we are posting. Hang on a second. Maybe. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, so it's posting, so give me a second. So, as the server is powering up, the one big real problem that you're gonna see here is the fact that the reality check comes into you based on basically four core things. One, obviously your switch or switches. Two, your NICs and your fiber cable or your 10 gigabit uh, copper, um, your operating system, and of course your uplink out of your facility or your building or your home. So by default, most operating systems are set to go no higher than a one gigabit. In some cases, they'll go as low as TX100 um, because of the, rev the revision of either the driver or the state of the operating system. So not everybody gets the latest and greatest and so on and so on. They instead will get tried and true what's most capable and the ability to get what you need to have done, done. So with that being said, the reality of the fact is the operating system, as we bring it up, is defaulted to one gig or less. So you have to do three basic things for each level, all four levels of your equipment. One. Go to your NIC, go to the drivers, get the manuals, check the manuals, the PDF manuals, and confirm the necessary configurations that you're gonna to need to basically change the configuration from one gig to 10 gig. That includes your MTU settings and so on and so on. Two, you have to do the same thing for your switches. Be careful though, if you have switches that step down into a one gig environment, or you're switching over to a router, keep those ports uniform, as in, you know, you're not going to get any more than a gig bandwidth, so expect that. Now, that's important because if you have connections on another switch in the house, all bandwidth is dictated by one gigabit, regardless of how fast your internal 10 gig network is. The only way you're going to get 10 gig network is if you're on the 10 gig network with 10 gig connectivity. Lastly, and the most key detail is the operating system. You need to make sure that when the operating system comes up, and you go into the NIC settings, you need to walk through those to properly configure your network in such a way so that it knows now to work in a higher MTU level, higher bandwidth transfer rates, and it's paired with other devices like itself. So, for example, in this case, I have down here an Isilon, which is a very big box, 58 hard drives on a 10 gigabit Gbit connection. That means it's going up here and it's this connection right here, the one that's dormant. Then the 10 gig Dell 
with its capacity runs up here as well and 10 gigabit. But all clients in the house come through a one gigabit pipe. So these two guys can transfer very fast uh, and they need to because they need to do more than any of the traffic that comes from the switch up above or the switch below. So you need to make sure that your operating system is set up correctly based on what the guidelines specify. Yes, I wish I could tell you guys there's one set of settings you can change, but the reality is that's not the case. You see, the reality is when you mix network cards, cabling, switches, and your operating system, may it be in the Linux environment or the other variations of environments such as TrueNAS or let's say uh, Windows Server, as a good example, let's say 2019, they're all different and they'll be different each time. So you want to first always, in my opinion, start with the NIC card. That's the first thing to do. When you have the NIC card in hand and you find out all those specs that you need for the NIC card and the type of connectivity, you go to the manuals and it will tell you, okay, to do this, you need to go in and set the driver values to X, Y, and Z. So by setting the driver values to X, Y, and Z, you're gonna be able to turn around and get the NIC to work correctly, do the same with the switch. The switch is going to say, hey, if your NICs are going to run at such and such MTU level, then you got to run X on the port switch level as well. Then your two interfaces are synced. Now it's time to do the operating system so that you'll be able to get yourself to a point where the operating system it knows now it can use 10 gigabit your pathway through the NIC is set to 10 gigabit and your switch responds in a 10 gigabit network. So what we have right now is we have the server beginning the process of posting and it's a very powerful box so it's doing quite a bit for me as we're going through the process of bringing up the operating system and that operating system over here in the KVM is booting up right now so give me just a second as I log in and get to the network set. Okay as you can see here now we're inside the environment and I'm basically going down here to network attributes. I'm going to go to properties and in here I'll be able to look at my settings the way I like to. This is the common network adaptive settings for server 2019. I'm going to go over here and select change adapter. Uh, at that point stage here I have my NICs. I have 10 gig NICs, one active, one inactive. My onboards and so on so I want to go to this guy right here because he's my active connection and I'm going to go down to property attributes and get the information from that particular platform so here we have what we call the base core components and protocols which are in use I restrict TCP 6 but I want to go over here to config if you look here there's my Intel card it's very similar to the one I showed you that had the GBIC in it. And now you're in pay dirt. So here is the value and the capacity of your Ethernet card. Now you may have some special manufacturing drivers that come in and replace this, but here is where all the minutia is. You want to go through these values here, such as jumbo packets, MTUs, and so on and so on, so that you can set your capacities in accordance to scaling, to buffering, and everything that supports the nature of your 10 gig connection. Uh, the key detail here is you may find out the jumbo packeting, in my case my NTU is set to 9014, is valuable, but you know what, when you interact with your offloading, which you're using basically the NTU of the, pro of the processor on the NIC card, you might find that when you interact with 1 gig connections, it's not very fast. That's because this is not geared for that. This is ge geared for distribution services of many, 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 many connections and or one or two very fast connections. So it's important to pay attention to the values that are recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, by doing that, it will give you the ability to work with this system in such a way so that you're going to be able to get what you want. Not every environment is the same. So that's important for you to understand. No NIC is commonly ever the same as the next NIC, except for the, the specific, specific make and models that you use in pairing. Pairing is a different situation, that's where you do like adaptive load balancing and you bring two 10 gig uh, NICs together to supplement the duplex mode so you have a true 10 gigabit 
full duplex communication pathway. Most people don't do that because they can't afford it. But in this case, this particular instance, I could do that with my secondary NIC. It's just that that's four physical ports and I only have eight ports here available with my spare three ports over here once I lose that one port for bridging. So I have seven and three for total for, for 10. So I really can't go too crazy on doing uh, multi-plexing uh, multi modes with duplexing. Uh, I can do some, but I'll have to reconfigure my setup every single time. So as you can see, this configuration is kind of easy to build when you think about it. But it's going to be a process. You're going to have to take the time. You're going to have to read a little bit. You're going to have to experiment some because even though 10 gigabit switches say one thing, they may not truly have the maximum bus speed on the back end to support all your ports in use at once. So learn your switch, use your manuals, set the recommendations, then tweak, then you're optimized. Um, you can go to Linux Tips. They actually have some pretty severe experiences. Uh, as I enjoy watching Linus and his team discover new technologies and things like that that I've seen for a long time, it's absolutely enjoyable to watch and learn from him as well. Everybody learns from each other, and this is what my goal is, is to give you free information so that you can reach that place that you want to be at in your own home labs and so on. I'll have more videos coming out now that I'm past COVID and long haul COVID and all that craziness. I'll be able to get more videos out for everybody. God bless and please keep learning. Take care.